When we pray, there's a God who hears us. Yeah. When we pray, there's a God to answer. Yeah. When we pray, we prevail, we prosper. All right, let's round up what we've been doing so far. Can we, can we just look at our scripture together? Romans 4, 17 to 22. We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by leaving like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as the father of many peoples. Abraham was, the, was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life with a word make something out of nothing. Verse 18, when everything was hopeless Abraham believed anyway decided not to leave on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do but on what God said he will do and so he was made father of a multitude of peoples God himself saying to him you are going to have a big family Abraham Verse 19, everyone, Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say, it's hopeless. This hundred year old body could never father a child. Nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. Verse 20, he did not tiptoe around God's promise Asking cautiously skeptical questions. What did he do? He plunged into the promise and came up strong. Ready for God. Let's stop there. Father, we ask for the blessing within the next few minutes. In Jesus the Christ, mighty name we pray. Please be seated and let's find a lies on how faith works. The only thing that makes you get results in the kingdom of God is faith. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to please the almighty God. Faith is not a calling. Faith is not a ministry. I hear some people say, I have a ministry of faith. No, faith is not a ministry. Faith is not a calling. Faith is not a denomination. Our church is a church of faith. No, faith is not a denomination. Faith is not a group Faith is not a movement. I belong to the faith movement. I belong to a faith group like others don't belong there. Faith is not a group. Faith is not a movement. Faith is not an era. Like you know we are in the era of faith. We are in the season of faith. There's no such things. Faith is not a feeling. I feel faith. No. Faith is not a doctrine. It is important therefore to know that if faith is not all of this, what then is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 1. What is faith? Hebrews chapter 11 in verse 1, the amplified version. I want everybody to look at it and I want us to read together the word of the Lord. Once you go now, faith is what? assurance title deed confirmation of what things hoped for divinely guaranteed and the evidence of what 
things not seen, the conviction of their reality, faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by what? So faith is assurance. Faith is the confirmation, the title deeds of things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. So what is faith from the scripture? Number one, the Bible says faith is the substance of things you hope for. Okay, let's bring it home. How many of us here are hoping for some things this year? Wave your hands like you don't care. Mm -hmm. Hoping to be married, hoping to have money. Oh, wave, those of you for money, wave your hands plenty. Jesus, have mercy on your children. <laughs> See plenty hands. <laughs> two, two hands. <laughs> you too. How many of us are hoping for a good house? Some of you inside the water. You want to have a house inside the water. Banana Islands by Jabi Lake Moor. I hear you. How many of us are hoping for a fine car? See, you are even groaning. <laughs> the car came with a groaning. <laughs> How many of us are hoping for a good job? Good office? Thank you. Put your hands down. Okay. Now, I want to ask you a question. How many of us have hoped for things like this before and they didn't happen? Wave your hand. Look around. And say to your neighbor, I didn't, I didn't know it happened to you too. <laughs> well, wave it again. You've hoped for something and it did not come to pass. Okay, maybe I should help you better. You've hoped for plenty of things and they've not come to pass. Two hands. God bless you. All right, thank you. I see that. And the question is, why did I hope for it and I didn't get it? Why do I always hope and I don't always get? I was in that situation before. Until God opened my eyes to see what I'm about to share with you. That's why you hear me saying, whenever I set a goal to accomplish some things, most of the time before the middle of the year I've accomplished them. How did I go from accomplishing nothing to accomplishing my dreams for every year? How did I get there? Was it always like this? No. Were there moments in my life where I, I had hopes and nothing? Absolutely. What did I discover that has changed the narrative? That's what I want to share with you. Look at that scripture again. I want them to put the King James Version quickly. I want you to look at why it doesn't happen on this Easter day. How many of you want to discover how it works? How many of you want to know how it works? Okay, look, we're going to work it together. Is that right? So it's not Pastor Sam telling you anything. I want the word of God to show you the answer. All right, let's look at it. Can we read that together now? Number one. Now, what? Faith, Faith is what? Substance of things hope for stop there so if there is something i am hoping for look up look up if there's something i am hoping for the bible said the reason why it will come to pass is that that thing i am hoping for has a substance did you get that so faith is the substance of things you hope for. So why is it that the things I hope for don't come to pass? Because they are not substantiated. Why is it that what I hope for to be healed, to be married, to have a job, to have this breakthrough. Why is it that what I've been hoping for to get money, to get that, to become this, to achieve that, to reach that. Why is it that what I hope for don't come to pass? You're not the only one. 
It's because my hope lacks substance. Pastor Sam, break it down. So what is the substance of faith? What is the substance of things so far? Now you need to understand that word substance. When the Bible says, now faith is the substance. Is that okay? Faith is the substance. What is substance? Substance of things so far. Substance of things so far. I have hope, but this is the substance. The word substance is actually a Greek word called hypostasis. Don't let that bother you. I'll break it down. It is called hypostasis. Now, that's where you get the word substructure from. Those of you who are into engineering. Because that again may sound like a big word, that's where you get the word foundation from. Remember the Bible teaches us that there was a man who had a vision of building a house and he decided to build without foundation. Come on, talk to me somebody. And then the Bible said the wind came and the rain came and the storm came. What happened to the building? The hope he had collapsed. Why? It lacked hypostasis. It lacked foundation. It lacks what we call substructure. It was standing on nothing. That was why it amounted to nothing. Can I say that again? It was standing on nothing. That was why it amounted to nothing. Pastor, why is it that my hope always amounts to nothing? Because your hope is standing on what, sir? Talk to me loud and clear. On nothing. So how do we get our hope to become a reality? Yes, again, everything you hope for, find a word from God concerning it. The word of God is the foundation that carries our hope. Can I say that again, ma? The word of God is the foundation that carries our hope into the time of fulfillment. So look up, look up. Let's let's get it straight. Okay. So I was waiting on the Lord. My wife and I were waiting for our daughter Darlene, and uh, God had told me. Listen to what He said. We were naming David. Past Sunday, them they were there. We were naming David in Akko Estate, where we used to stay. As we were carrying out the naming ceremony, all of a sudden the Lord said, "Look up." I looked up, and I saw a girl. And the Lord said, your next child is going to be a girl. Just like he told me the first child was going to be a boy. He was telling me now the first, next child is going to be a girl. So I thought it was going to happen immediately. Year one, nothing happened. Now, don't forget I said God told me, right? But sir, even though God told me that your next child is going to be a girl. That is a word from God. Oh God. Can I help somebody now? That is a word from God. In fact, that one on his own. Since you know the God you are dealing with, is enough. But I understand how the things of God work. So the word from God for me is not enough. I now need a word, the word of God. To strengthen the word from God. So, I hope you know the difference. The word from God and the word of God. Is that okay? So I went into the word of God. To find again in scripture a promise that guarantees that the word from God will come to pass. Is anybody catching what I'm teaching? Honestly, what I just shared with you, I don't know even how I shared it with you. I need to take offering now because I just dropped a mega secret in your hands now. So I need to collect offering before I continue. Because you didn't pay for what I'm sharing with you this morning. You didn't pay for it. Did you hear what I just said to you? So I have a word from God. Is that okay? So I then went into the word of God to find in the word of God a support for the word from God. Does that make sense? 
So as I opened the scripture, on that day I was not reading about rapture. I want a child, so I'm not reading about rapture. I want a child, so I'm not looking for deliverance inside the Bible. We call it bias study. What do I call it? When you are dealing with issues in the area of finances and you want to get out of your financial crisis, that is not the time to be reading your Bible about marriage and relationship. You engage in what you call bias study of the word. Meaning, the only thing you are looking for in God's word is anything the Bible says about finances. Do you understand that? About prosperity. So I began to look at everything the Bible says about children. Promise about children. And I found where the Bible says I've made you to be a father of many. And then I began to look at promises from Genesis down to Revelation. Wherever I can find the promise of God. I found them. And you know what I did? From the first promise in Genesis. I now wrote the next promise. So that when I'm praying. As I open Genesis 1. I will now be able to move to the next one. That's how I connected it. I showed that Bible to Pastor John. So watch this. Every time when I'm in church. Those who are my pastors here will tell you. When we're in, we're in a house. When I'm preaching like this. I'll say oh look. I say I see my daughter coming. The reason I'm. Don't follow me to talk. If you don't know what I am. Can you see why you say what others say, but you don't see what they see? Have you not seen people when Bishop Edebo say, I cannot be poor? When he started saying it, you now see young people too in our community. They will look at me, young because they too, they will just, well, I can never be poor. By the time hunger beats them, You know why they are hungry? Because they are saying what has no foundation. Bishop Wedeko did not just start saying, I cannot be poor. He saw something in the word of God. So when you see somebody say, saying, I will be a lender to many, it's it's not just talk. The person is talking from something. Come on, am I talking to somebody here? Have you seen a lady who said, ah, this year, by the grace of God, oh, meow, meow, I must marry this year, and the year comes and pass, nothing happened. You know why? She was speaking from what? Nothing. But when a lady finds in the word of God, and your name shall be Hefziba, you shall be called Beulah, you shall be desired. You shall be married. A lady was studying the word of God. And she came to the place where the Bible says. You shall become the desire of nations. Katayama. She jumped up. And she said God the hour has come. I shall be desired. And she went from having no suitors. To having multiple suitors. So when she begins to say men are coming. Don't join now to say men are coming. Why you don't know what is making her to say men are coming? Faith is the substance, the foundation upon which we stand to say what we say. Kenneth Hagin was about to die. And when Kenneth Hagin was about to die, his mother had come to greet him. The doctor was just waiting. In fact, the doctor assigned the certificate. The doctor was waiting to put the time Kenneth Hagin died. Time. Because it was obvious he's been bedridden for months. And it was obvious that he was going to die. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the Lord appeared to the Lord showed Kenneth Hagin a Bible. The Lord showed him scriptures. Mark 11. That's why everywhere you see Kenneth Hagin until he died. Mark 11, 21 to 23. 24 was his major scripture because the Lord showed him that scripture and when he saw that scripture and the Lord told me he said do you believe do you believe that you are healed he said yes he said if you believe you are healed stand up don't wait to feel until you stand up 
And he stood up and he said, Doctor, I am healed. Why is he saying I am healed? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Faith, the faith he's using to say I am healed is because he found substance. Somebody say substance. So what is substance? Let me see who gets it. What is substance? Substance is what? Say it loud and clear. Say it again. The word, the promise from God. Is that okay? The promise from the word of God. That is your substance. I'm sh listen, I don't care to know who the man of God is. I'm showing you how it works. Is somebody just getting it now? This is how this is how ordinary people begin to do extraordinary things. Okay, so you begin to hear somebody make statements like, Oh, hallelujah. I see the doors of the nations opening to me. I'm taking nations. I'm taking especially mouth, mouth too big, eh? it's just to talk. Nation, nation. Eh? Too much, too ambitious. You know why he's talking like that? He saw something in, in Psalms 2. Ask of me, and I will give you what's that? The nations, nations. Let others be asking for cars. You ask for nations. You didn't catch what I just said. Let others be asking for cars. Let others be asking for money. Let others be asking for a job in Canada. Now listen, you don't ask for a job in Canada. Ask me for Canada. Samsu, ask of me and I will give you the nations as what, sir? Inheritance. So when you see that nations are your inheritance, it will change the way you talk. Sir, this was what I saw 22 years ago. When in a room in a small church, I will open my mouth, man. You know what I'll be telling them? I'll say, I see myself going to the nations of the earth, all expenses paid. They are here, living beings. I will be telling them, and they will just be looking at me. So I'm like, oh, what's this guy saying? Sir, as at the time when I was saying I would go to the nation, all expenses paid, I didn't have Nigerian passport. Why am I talking like this? I saw something in the world. I saw something. I am standing on something. That's why I'm talking the way I'm talking. And you know what? What I am standing on never fails. That's why I'm not afraid to say it. Hey, this thing that Papa is saying, no. What if it doesn't come to pa Ah, that's for you to worry. Me, I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm standing on. Nevertheless, the foundation of God's words remains sure. I know what I'm standing on. I will say we'll go to the nations of the earth. All expenses paid. We will say government will invite us. Institutions will invite us. We will not be among those that will be insulting at embassies. No, sir. No, 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 sir. Hey. There's another revelation burning in my heart now for another level of my life. I'll just give you a little thing for you to, to, to worry over, to think about. So when I stumbled on that portion of scripture, 2 Corinthians 5, when he said, now you are ambassadors. Uh -uh, wait a minute. Too. Uh -uh. I says, I thought, I thought you need to wait for your country to send you out before you become an ambassador. He says, no, now, sir, now. As we are talking now, can you help me look at an ambassador around you? 
Kindly as a what's your name, sir? Announce your new status. I am ambassador. Ah, huh? ambassador precious. I honor you, man. See, some people they are afraid to talk. With all this one, I just share something. I just gave you what now? What did I just give you? What did I just give you? So can't you talk with the foundation? You have a foundation you can't talk. Let me look at somebody say, I am out. Introduce yourself now. <laughs> Sir, ambassadors have a way they are being treated at embassies. When ambassadors come to embassies, they say, way they treat them. When ambassadors end up flight, they say, way they treat them. So here is what I say to myself. I say, from now onwards, I may not be the ambassador of Nigeria, but I'm an ambassador of a superior kingdom. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? So I now understand that by virtue of my ambassadorship, which is of a superior kingdom, whose currency and whose economy is eternally stable, whose king is the king of kings, I see other ambassadors being subjected to you. If somebody understands that, let me have a big amen in the house of Sit down. So you see, this understanding has affected me. So if there's a country I want to go to, sir, I'm not expecting trouble. And no, no, I'm not expecting trouble. I hear they can be funny at the Philippines embassy. They, they, they learned they can be very funny. So, you were the one that went with me, right, Peter? And we went there. When I was going to get there, somebody was already waiting there. Who knows them that they respect? To make sure my passage inside was easy. They don't allow anybody who is not applying for visa to enter any embassy. But because of me, a person who is not applying had to come inside. They gave him a seat because of me. Just to make sure if they want to misbehave, they'll be looking at his face. When you function with this mindset, it begins to change the atmosphere around you. Am I talking to anybody here? So what is faith? Faith is standing on the promises of God and speaking based on it. Can I say it again? Faith is what, sir? Standing on the promises of God and doing what? Speaking based on that promise. That God said, and I say, because God said it, I'm also saying it, by his stripes, so if you are sick in your body, what do you say? Huh? I am healed. Is that okay? I am healed. So when you are telling people I am healed, they say, but you are still feeling pain. And all no, tell them I am healed. I insist on what the word says. You are not catching what I'm saying. If you will insist on what the word says, you will soon see what the word promises. My time is up. I want you to walk out of this session. I want you to walk out of this place. We've taught you some things on faith. By no means have we been able to exhaust them. But I want to make sure you go home with this from today. I want to show you how hope becomes reality. What you hope for must have a scripture you stand on. Did I just help anybody? Did you get, are you getting something that would, would change everything you've been doing before? So you can now see why hope has just been crashing. Hope has just been dashed. Because hope has no, what do you call it again? Say it again. Say it louder. Oh, this year, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, this year is going to be... Oh, this year, plenty, 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 plenty. And that was supposed to be the worst year you ever had. Why? 
you spoke with nothing under. I will finish that project. Where is the word you are standing on? You will look at the word of God. You have, how many of you are doing projects here? How many of you are doing projects? Don't, look at the hands. Wave it at me. Projects. So what do you do when you are in the project here? Can anybody give me one of the scriptures that you stand on to finish a project? Anybody? That's why in church you have so many abandoned projects. Pastor, did you know they move again? No. <laughs> Pastor, did you don't stop? Now decking. We did decking. Now they deck the thing. You know they move again. So I have a scripture for every project I do. That's why there's no project you've seen me start that I don't finish. And I finish my projects in record time. And by the way, I finish projects debt free. Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. Debt? Mm -mm, never. Project? I don't care to know my what project I've done, ma. It's been debt free. That grace God has given it to us coming from His Word. So what, what do you quote? What scripture do you use when you want to do a project? The hand of Zerubbabel has started this. His hand will complete it. Father, my hand is starting this project. Another hand will not finish it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When a project you start suddenly gets stopped, by forces beyond your explanation. Is there a scripture for the project to resume? Yes. You go to the book of Ezra. Where the Bible says, And the work was forced to stop. And by the prophesying of the prophets, The work resumed and was completed. So what do I need if a project has stopped? Papa, I came to see you, sir. There's a project I started. The project has stopped. Or the project is stalled. Sir, can you speak a word? Because I saw in the word of God that if a prophet can speak, the project that was stopped will continue. And by the prophesying of the prophets, the work will be finished. Pastor, I've been going to embassies over and over. With everything I do, they will reject me. Papa, what's going on? Oh no. Be you lifted up, O oh, ye watcher. You get, be you lifted up, ye watcher. Everlasting, that the king of glory may watch, sir. I carry that king on the inside of me. Gates cannot be shut before me. Am I talking to somebody else? Oh, God. Papa, I hear that there's money in Abuja, but my hand is not touching them. It's only salary, I'm, and salary is nothing. Nobody, Abuja is not a place for salary. Papa, I need to make more money than the money I'm making in Abuja. Oh, well, he is a God who can show you hidden riches in secret places and treasures that are kept where? They are not available for all. If you are not shown, you won't see them. So how do you begin to pray? Father, show me the treasures. And because you are his child, you cannot begin to declare, Father, I thank you because I have access to the treasures of this land. Pastor Sunday, please, sir. I don't know who was, if you were there. I went to orientation camp. I told them Abuja is a land that flows with milk and honey. It swallows its inhabitants. Is there any copper that, was, that has heard me say that at the... You were there? You were there. Sister Debbie, I asked all of you to pray, right? I told you to pick portions of the earth. I said, speak to this land. Abuja is a land that flows with milk and honey. There's milk and honey in this land. Don't join them to talk nonsense. There's money in the city. You are not here. What I, I said, there's money in this land. Kai. My wife and I were talking, eh, eh, you know, economy is too hard. Eh, you know, eh, diesel price has gone to Kiriko. And then, you know, petrol too has gone to something. And then uh, food, ah, rice is now 70 something thousand. Oh, kiri, 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 bo. So I thought in the morning, you just wake up, you just see people dead in Abuja, people just be dying. Like just, 
I just saw Abuja will just, the population will just reduce. <laughs> so until I got to the airport, sir, to people coming in. Car park, people coming in. I said, to a bad land, I didn't say something we are not saw it. <laughs> Please let me touch your neighbor and say, this land, milk and honey day here. <laughs> eh? Let me open your eyes on the milk and honey. How many of you have noticed bridges they are constructing? Wait a minute. How many of you have, let's forget about the plazas first. How many of you have noticed that they are constructing bridges, roads? How many of you noticed that we are having road construction in the history of Abuja? I don't know if we're having road construction as we have it now. Am I, are we in agreement? So, those roads, spirits are doing them. Eh? Sorry, the supervisors of those land, they are spirits. Eh? Those who walk in those places, eh? they are paying them. Am I correct? Those people don't eat food. They feed on air. They don't drink water because they are spirits. Am I correct? So, they eat. Am I correct? Who is cooking for them? It is where you are that makes you to think there's no money in the land. Those who are making the money, they want to build houses. They can't build. Am I correct? So they are looking for builders. And the builders will be looking for supervisors. And then when they finish the building, the builders will be looking for cement. The cement owners will need to eat. Somebody has to provide them food. Am I talking to anybody? When they finish the building, somebody has to do interior decoration. There's money in the land. There are things you can do in this land that will change your finances forever. What you want to do is to say, Father, show me where treasures are kept in darkness. God has allowed veils to be on the eyes of many so they don't see the treasures he's keeping for you. You will, have to, you will have to ask God, say, Father, take the veil away. Let me see treasures in darkness. What is faith? Faith is standing on the promises of God and speaking according to the promise. So saying this year will be a special year for you without standing on the promise of God is the reason why many hopes and aspirations have not come to pass. Let the woman who wants a child, can she begin to speak based on the promise of God's word? What does the word of God say to the woman who wants a child? Find that promise. And based on that promise, you cannot begin to say, this is my year to carry my child. Am I talking to somebody in the house of God? Has, it, has this opened your eyes to something here today? If, if this is all I came to achieve here today, I think it will be worth it on this Easter day. Somebody needs to meditate on why Jesus died. And remember that he died to redeem you. He died to reposition you. He died to restore you. He died to lift you up. Remember what he died for. As it is promised in scripture. And based on that, you can open your mouth and say, this is my year. This is my season. Because it is in the word of God. Is it okay if I pray with people who have hopes and aspiration here? How many of you are trusting God for some major things this year? You want to say, Pastor Sam, I have gotten what you said. I want you to pray for me. Stand to your feet. Let us pray together. Let me ask you one more time. How many of you know how to turn hopes into realities now? So for what you hope for, you must get what? 
What do you call the word? Say loud and clear. Say loud and clear. And that substance is what we... Another name for it is what? So when we make declaration, it's because we are standing on a... When we make declaration, it's because we are standing on what? Very good. You stand standing on the promises of Christ. My... Overcoming daily by the standing on the now, everybody say, Stand. What do we do? Say it again. That's how it works. That's how it works. I find the promise, stand on it, and I speak. And as after I finish speaking, I start acting. I make sure my actions are in alignment with my word. Say it again. My actions are in alignment with my word. Your word is not going right and you, you are going left. No. This is my year to carry my baby. What are the actions that align with it? Go and buy baby things. This is my year to be married. Because I found it in God's word. Because I believe that what you start doing, young girl. Start shopping for wedding stuff. That's what happened to the lady in Kenya. Last year we declared on PPH. I said, this is going to be your season. I said, go and get your material. And I thought it was a joke. This girl just reached out to me from Kenya. And she said, Papa. I said, yes. She said, I want to, you are my father in the Lord. I said, okay. She said, I want to send you a wedding gown for you to choose. Which one you like me to wear? <laughs> Radical faith. And she sent me some lists, about four of them. And I said, I can't make a decision for you. I said, but there's one I think looks nice. She said, Daddy, amazingly, that's the same one I like too. And she said, Daddy, I'm going to buy it and keep. She said, sir, and you will come to officiate my wedding. Because I have received the word from the Lord. So that's how a white man, not even Kenya. A white man showed up in Kenya. She said, Papa, it's not the black man that came. It's the white man. The man just saw her and he said he likes her. She said, the man is just over the moon concerning me. Few months later. We were already in the U.S., so there was no way I could go to Kenya to officiate a wedding. A few months later, August, September, married. Where is she now? She has relocated out of Kenya. All of this happened within months. For a lady who was almost over age. But wedding gown kept. Corresponding action. Are you catching what I'm saying? Father, I thank you because I have a job in this city. I, I'm, I'm seeing mega contracts coming. Somebody will receive it. Don't just say it. If you say there's mega contract, can you show us what? Foundation. And based on that, you say it. And once you say it, you now start stepping out. Hello, sir. I came to meet you, sir. I learned people are giving out jobs here. Oh, young man, sorry, we don't have any job. We are not giving anybody a job. Oh, okay, sorry, sir. I want to drop my CV. When you people are ready to start giving up jobs, there are things that, what you people do are things that I attend to. Since you are not giving out job when you are ready. Are you listening to me? Some of you are too nice for breakthrough. You are, you are a very nice person. Yes, sir. There are too many nice people here. You know, I don't like disturbing people. But you know I'm a very nice person. Can I, sorry you. I was reading fruit of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, uh, gentleness, self-control. I didn't see nice. 
This nice, you are nice, doesn't have any reward. Though. Go and meet the man for a job. Sir, you know, I don't like disturbing people. Go and knock on the door. Sir, you know, sir, you know, I don't like inconveniencing people. That's why life is inconveniencing you. <laughs> Papa, you know, for me, anything that will come to me will just come. <laughs> That's why you are where you are. Help me slap your neighbor. Say, stop that niceness. I don't like her. You are even looking nice. Help me, help me slap somebody. Say, you are looking nice. You are too nice. Since you've been sitting near me, you've been looking too nice. Pastor Bayedi, you know me, I know you are not nice. You are not. <laughs> he said, ask. And you shall, you shall be given. Knock. Sir, that word knock is not knock. That word ask is not ask. Bad translation. Go and see the correct translation. Ask and keep on asking. That's kingdom. Are you hearing me, sir? Uncle Nice, are you hearing me? Sir, sir the reason I didn't come back was that when I asked you the first time, you didn't answer me, sir. So I thought sir, I should not bother you again. Egba, life will egg by you. Life will flog you. Your father God said ask. And you, you are better than God. You can't ask. Sometimes it's coming from arrogance and pride. You are too big to ask. That's why you are too big to get anything. He said ask. And keep on asking. Knock. And keep on knocking. Seek. Is that in the Bible? Everybody, oh yeah, let us read together. Because some people say that that pastor said, he just distressed us with something nonsense. You know. Oh yeah, we will read it together. Are we ready now? One, two, go. Ask. And keep on asking. And it. Wait a minute. Can you see why nobody has given it to you? They only give it to those who do what? Ask. Who ask and what? Ask. Papa, I don't know why. Papa, I don't know why nobody is giving me anything. Because you are not asking. You are a nice person. Very nice woman. <laughs> the only sad thing about your niceness is that no bank gives people special interest or niceness. It's a useless investment. Investing niceness, no return. And you have not stopped investing this niceness for years now. See those who are getting it in life. Let's look at them. Oh yeah, let's do one to go. Wait, wait, wait. No. The, if that person around you is not reading, hold the person tight. Say, brother, you must talk. The spirit of niceness is holding them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we ready now? Hold somebody, say, bro, you must read. Are we ready? Nobody will be left behind in this church. On your marks, get set, go. Uh -huh. And, oh, yeah, graduate. Uh -huh. Finally. <laughs> have you gotten answers so why you have not gotten things here can you see why nothing has been happening no. Mrs. Eva imagine uh, what's her name, our sister, our elder sister anybody know that girl they call Ruth Ruth, you remember her uh, if she had behaved like some of you sisters in church Roots will be single today. Hello, Papa. I know the person. I know in my spirit who the person is. His brother Boaz. Hey. So, have you met him? Ah, 
Papa, no. You know, Papa, me, my own. I know that God will bring him to me. I know God will one day bring him to me. Let me shake somebody. Say, you are too nice. But let me show you the people that understand the scripture. Ruth is one person that understands the scripture. She said from the time of John the Baptist until now. The kingdom of heaven suffered violence. And the violence if you are not talking you are a suspect in this church. Somebody say loud and clear. Take it. I'm not hearing you loud and clear. You are not so wrong. Okay, say it again. I personalize it. I and Ruth was like, Ruth was like, a uh, mother in the Lord called her. She said, My daughter, I sense in my spirit that the hour for you to get that man as your husband has come. She said, she said, hey, mommy, is that so? Can I tell you what Pentecostal girls will have done? Thank you, mommy, for the word from the Lord. She, they will not go inside bedroom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I thank you. Because finally the word of the Lord has come. That Ogabu is going to be my husband. Then she will carry phone. Hello, Chidima, how you doing now? Ah, God, don't do a move. Mama just tell me, my prophet and Mama Oye just told me now that that guy told you that I've been sensing him. I said, That's the one. Mama Oye, too, just confirm it. Uh -huh. Then Pastor Sunday, too, now also just confirm it. Your house is a house of confirmation, <laughs> library of confirmation. Prophet G, confirm. Apostle, confirm. Record of confirmation. Eloma, the very night Ruth heard the word. She said, Mommy, thank you so much. I believe in this word. I am going there. In the night. In the night. I move. <laughs> Hello, sir. A wealthy man like that has security guards. What makes you think you will enter his place and security will not catch you? When I'm walking with the word, I subdue forces. So come and see Ruth passing by. Gate man sleeping. The next gate man sleeping. She got to the door. That was the only day Boaz forgot to close his door. Enter this house. Nobody could stop her. Lay by his feet. Nobody could stop her. Somehow the man woke up. He said, what is this? He felt the body of a woman. There's a difference between them. When a man sleep on your leg, there's no need to wake up. Because it's continuation of sorrow. But when the woman sleeps, don't let me preach on that. That's it. <laughs> when the, woman sleeps. the guy said, What is this? He said, What is this? And he saw a thing. He said, what is this God? She didn't waste time, sir. She said, sir, that you may redeem me. Simple, straight word. Oga, marry me. Yeah. Oh, Papa, I thought it is men that should propose. Where did you read it in your Bible? And, but Papa, in Genesis chapter what? In chapter what in the Bible did you see the woman, the man going to meet the woman to propose? One or two cases. Genesis chapter 2. The Bible says, And the Lord brought the woman to the man. Make you sit down there. Instead of you to say, Holy Ghost, carry me. Carry me. <laughs> I don't know what you are looking for in church by this sign. Am I helping somebody here? The 
there is a job for you. You know that job. I realize I just hope they will remember. Remember what? The devil will make sure they forget you. She says, I marry me. And the man look at her and say, but uh, is this, there's another man that's supposed to be your king. Because since you lost your husband, there's an order in our family. The king's, the eldest is supposed to be your redeemer. If that one says no, then I will marry you. She says, ah, where is that elder one? He's the one living there. She says, I'm on my way to his house. Hello, uncle, how are you, sir? My name is Ruth. I came to see you, marry me. She said, you're not the one I want to marry you. I'm just giving you an opportunity to make sure you disqualify yourself. Because I bind your spirit. It's not be you I won't marry. <laughs> and the man looked at her and said, sorry, my daughter, I want to marry you. She said, the Lord just answered. Did you notice the Bible says she did not regret one bit? Because that was not the person she wants to marry. She knocked him off. Legally. Came back to the man. So, yeah, bros, I don't knock off that guy. <laughs> Every sister under the sound of my voice, every nonsense hanging around you. Today, we knock the nonsense off. Nonsense relationship. Bye bye to Jagba Jagba. Fire. Don't miss fire tomorrow evening, four o'clock. Make sure you are here for o'clock. Don't go and sit with any nonsense tomorrow. Come to the house of God for o'clock tomorrow. Knock them off. When you are supposed to be going to look for correct jobs, you are hanging around nonsense jobs. Knock them off. You should be connecting with good friends. You are hanging around nonsense friends. That's how she got married, though. You know, you are waiting. Nice. Ask. How many times? How many times should you ask? How many times should you knock? How many times should you seek? Odaro. I'm here to testify to the goodness of God. Um last year i developed a cough i don't know what kind of cough it was or the type but uh, it was a choking cough i would choke on anything i would choke on any smell any scent anything i would choke when driving uh, i would choke on literally everything i can say so from last year people of god i started using birds and whenever I feel like I'm about to cough, I'll run to the bathroom, sit on the toilet and start coughing. Even though I do that, I'll pee quite all right. But immediately I come out, I'll start coughing and the pee will still come out. That's when I came up with an idea to say, no, 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 no. I need to be using pads. So I've been using pads from last year. I wore pads from last year up to last month in february on the 60th of the 60th of february when the reverend sam moye was praying for for the sick i'm always following reverend sam moye every morning i don't miss i always share and no this time around i'm going to testify and uh, people of god that was tuesday i remember i lay on my carpet i said father you have to touch me. You have to heal me. You, you, you have to heal me. You, you, you have to heal me of this cough. Because it, it, it was becoming... I don't even know how to say it. It became... It was embarrassing. That's what I can say. Reverend Sam prayed for us all. And um, what I usually do, I don't leave immediately. I would stay until I hear other people's testimonies. From that morning, I never coughed up to today. I remember later in the day my daughter's bit was caught somewhere. We went, we drove because I would be with my the, the bottle of water every time. Because whenever I start coughing is to sip in water. Every time I start coughing is to sip in the bottle of water. 
but uh, I remember we moved that day. We went into town. We we came back. Then well, on our way back, that's when my daughter was saying, "Mom, you've been driving with windows open without coughing." So then I explained to her that this is what I did in the morning. I never wanted to tell you guys. I just believed that God was going to take away that cough that morning and for sure he did it. Thank you for watching. We hope you were blessed and richly transformed by this sermon. Join us on site and online in any of our centers globally as displayed on the screen. When we pray the God who heals us. Yeah. When we pray the sir God to answer, yeah. when we pray we prevail, we prosper. Follow us on all social media handles as shown on the screen. For more inquiries, visit www.thetransformingchurch.org. Also, don't forget to join Prophetic Prayer Hour with Reverend Sam Oye.